Welcome back, YouTubers, to another TNA Impact Wrestling review with us, the British Fish. Just James, subscribe on the web, like this video, and comment your thoughts on this show down in the comment section below. Oh, if you connect us, the link in the box below. I'm Mr. Parkin, and this guy sitting next to me is none other than AJ. What's up? God, we're excited, aren't we? Because they have uh, they have some very interesting concepts coming in next week. We've just finished. We're just following up lockdown and. Uh, this Impact Zone crowd really was good, wasn't it, this week? Second week in a row, there's been a good Impact Zone crowd. Nashville, hang your head in shame. Yeah, that's the thing with this. It's that we were thinking, like, TNA are not really good for their crowd. So we were thinking maybe that it was going to go all back to normal and that. But today, surprise, they've shown us that maybe there is a chance that we're going to get more of a reaction in the future events. So it was a positive thing. i tell you what, they probably thought to themselves, hmm, we better cage these guy up from, guys up from last week and bring them in again this week. But anyway, so we're following up lockdown with TNA Impact Wrestling. Uh, we opened up the show with none other than Bobby Roode with a, uh, with a new haircut, actually. Was, what did you think of the new haircut, NJ? Edge-like? <laughs> I looked at it just thought... <laughs> But that's not very Who is that? Who's replaced him? Because when you look at the back, you see the image of him with the long hair. It's like, that's Bobby Roode. This, I, I just didn't like it. I'm not uh, a fan of it. I don't really mind it. It's a haircut. You know, it doesn't really change too much. And basically, you hear like the fans. You know you're getting a good reaction from the Impact Zone fans when they're going, shut the hell up. Shut the hell up. But basically, he promised he would beat he said he promised he would beat James Storm, and he did, and he has defeated everyone's heroes, and there is no more, no more uh, room to beat, and all of a sudden out comes Mr. Anderson. I wish Anderson. It was me. I wish it was me. Awesomeness. <laughs> what a great thing, because the thing I want to be Anderson first, one minute he's in a tag team with AJ going against Kazarian and Daniels, mm. then he's Swerving off from that to doing a few odd single matches. Now he's heading towards the title. So he's gone a bit all over the place. But this thing was really good. Because when I first watched TNA, we had Anderson in the top picture. I loved it. I thought this was good compared to what we had in WWE. Now he's maybe swerving this way again. Main event, top picture, whatever. I, I thought this was a good, good opponent for him. Well, he's involved in an opening segment. And he's involved in a main event segment. So that's a good little start yeah, for a guy like Mr. Anderson. So I do think warrants that kind of TV time. He could be a big star for TNA. It's a shame they dropped the ball on that guy. Um, and then we get Jeff Hardy coming out saying that, you know, Angle was the only reason why he wasn't champ. And now Angle is out the way. He can... Uh, do the crap, do get the championship for his creatures! Praise, testify, whatever you want to do. And uh, then Hogan appears on the Titans run saying that all oh, the champions will meet in the ring later, brother. And we got a number one contenders match. Anderson versus Hardy later, brother, dude. With this, they didn't quite accomplish what they needed to. They had loads of people in the opening, giving a good feel to the opener. Hogan announcing matches, so I did feel that this was really accomplishing, giving us a good bit to the beginning of the night. I mean, you followed up from lockdown with Bobby Roode, you're trying to you know, establish a new number one contender in the main event for Sacrifice. Um, so this opening segment could really much need to do what it needs to do. I mean, Anderson versus Hardy a bit, you know, mm, they kind of remember they had that our main event that time um, when it was over the number one contendership apparently to Angle, but there we go. Um, yeah. So it accomplished a lot. Looking at it, you do have a face versus face going towards the main event. So it makes you think that, okay, you normally picture the hill stepping in, like maybe a buddy Ray, but he's in a few of the Aries. But a face versus face does give you a think of a, have they not really got anyone else? But it's going to be a good match with the two wrestlers in the main event. Uh, at least they're trying to determine they're more content than us. That's all I'm worried about going to sacrifice. Um, after that opening segment, we then had a, what I thought was a very good tag team match between... Bully Ray Crimson and Ares and Morgan. Now, these are two feuds, I think, that kind of deserve to be on the TV show. You had Bully Ray and Crimson working over Morgan's leg. Bully Ray gets the pin after about six minutes, holding on to Ares' tights. And uh, two feuds I'd like to see continue, even though the lockdown match between Crimson and Morgan was, was awful. That's very true, because the match following the pay per view, it really was the best. Like, you had that uh, TNA opening match, mm. then you had the Morgan and Crimson okay matches but this match itself I was really hoping for maybe a Buddy Ray Mike time game because you know that's a good way to get the crowd going mm -hmm. a way to give him focus but the way he got the pin on uh, Aries at the end definitely gave us a feeling that he's getting the upper hand over Aries Aries is going to get his fight back later on to make the feud go from there I wonder if they'll fight over the x Division Championship I wonder what's going to happen there I guess we'll find out uh, in the future times but there we go I, I thought it was a good tag match six minutes um Pretty, pretty good segment, I thought. Um, we then had a Garrett Bischoff promo segment. 
where he comes out with his little accomplices, uh, AJ Styles, Anderson and RVD, and uh, Anderson in the back, shout out to you, no, Aries in the back, shout out to you, brother. Uh, we get Garrett Cohn this promo, and he kind of stumbles over his lines a little bit, and basically he's like, thanks everybody, and uh, AJ Styles says he's got balls. The other thing, again, now you get AJ involved in this, trying to big up uh, <laughs> uh, Garrett Bischoff, and I'm like, okay, oh, yeah. you're going through each wrestler, you're going through Sting, Hogan, Garrett, you the rest of his face, in matches Angle, and it's just like, why are you trying to do this week after week after week? He's had the big one at the pay per view. Now he's got this. I'm like, leave Garrett alone. Leave Brittany alone. Leave Garrett alone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it doesn't matter. But yeah, I mean, he stumbled over his words a little bit. Not a big fan of AJ Styles saying he's got balls. But there we go. Then we get out comes Ric Flair. Woo! Saying that Eric Beep made this business and that. Uh, Next week, we're going to have an Eric Beep tribute, and uh, you've got to admit, them blanking out the Bischoff names. <laughs> fucking hilarious. Well, this goes back to what I was saying, or maybe didn't mention, on our <laughs> review. The whole stipulation of getting rid of the Bischoff name is absolutely stupid. He is Eric Bischoff, and the fact that you can't use his own surname is ridiculous. So the fact they try to make entertaining by beeping out, Funny. yes, people will comment saying it's good, Funny. well, phone it on, but... <laughs> Still, I'm just like, okay, but Rick Flair said something I wanted to hear, that they're going to have this party that I'm going to be a part of. I'm happy going to it to represent all the greatness of Eric Bischoff. <laughs> they bumped up Bischoff. That was the funniest bit of the night. But basically, Rick Flair's pissed off. And yeah, that's a good move to the next segment, I guess. Um, we get a backstage segment after this where Daniel says he's going to be revealing the, uh, the AJ secret. Finally, I think it's about time this feud actually g gave us something, um, especially the amount of time they've been dragging it on now. And that leads us on to Kurt Angle versus AJ Styles. Now, a couple of things we want to address here. Uh, Angle, we thought after his injury, Angle wouldn't wrestle up after lockdown. We thought he'd at least take a break from his injury. But uh, I guess if Angle wants to kill himself in the ring, he can do. And we also lost our feed during this match as well, which is a bit annoying, wasn't it? Because most of the match really happened during adverts. That's very true. I look at this match. It's a match that TNA knows could be a big match. We've got Angle versus AJ, two big wrestlers going against each other. But when I look at Angle, I see that he put his injured body in a great big match at lockdown. He had to get carried out the ring, so maybe he could have missed a shot, if not two, just to make it look like he got injured and he needed a break. But taking nothing away from this match, it was a pretty good match. You know, he got dubbed out. Mm. But it's a match that TNA fans wanted to see. And then it pretty was showing me. Yeah, I mean, it was it was all about the storyline continuance of AJ, Daniels and Kaz, really, wasn't it? You had Daniels and Kaz coming out to the ring. Daniels gives AJ this piece of paper. And then AJ gets rolled up. And AJ looked pretty upset. And I'm thinking, you know, this whole thing is like it's all blackmail or something. At least we're... We're finally getting some like sort of reason for this feud now. We're sort of getting something there other than, you know, oh, I've got a secret on you. Now now he's actually got something. I know we don't know what it is yet, that's all part of the suspense, I guess. It's, at least it's something in this feud, even though it's going to be AJ versus Daniels again, I guess. Well, I look at this and you've got the fact that AJ now knows the reason behind the Kazari enjoying Daniels thing. And now AJ knows maybe this can be a promo in a week or so that he can announce what's happened so we will get to know ourselves. And yes, it's all building up to make the AJ and Daniels feud a lot more big and important with this certain news. And I guess they'll maybe blow it off at Slammiversary in yeah. that time, yeah. Two months' time. I just want to make a, a quick note here as well. The technical issues, we got two blackouts during this, I think, um, which is a, a really disappointing for me because we missed a fair amount and it kind of ruined the flow of the show a little bit, didn't it, with the fact we got two sort of blackouts of, of, uh, of Spike TV. So, um, well, we got the feed cut out in the next segment as well, didn't we? We had all the champions coming out to the ring, and all of a sudden the feed cut out, and I'm like, God, this is really ruining the flow and enjoyment of the show here. Yeah, I do look at that and think, Dan, where are you? Dan? Dan, the light's gone out. Yeah, he has gone. But yeah, that was pretty weird behalf of TNA. Which Boo! Was... Wow. Well, yeah, we don't really expect it from TNA, so the fact it happened... Boo to you, but... Don't really expect again, boo from me, do you? <laughs> <laughs> we'll take that away from the thing. It did lead up, up to this match. Yeah, we get a cut to... We get all the champions in the ring. And then we cut to Hulk Hogan telling RVD he's in the number one contendership match because he's down with the Hulkster, brother. And that's a bit weird. But we'll get more into that in the main event. Um, We basically, in this hour main event, we get, the, we get all the champions in the ring. We get Hulk Hogan announcing that 
Once a month, we're going to be getting an open fight night where challenge, where talents from outside TNA are going to be able to wrestle and Hogan is going to judge them and give them a contract. And basically, if someone gets challenged on the roster on this night, they have to fight and the champions will need to defend their title if challenged. Um, I guess we'll reserve our thoughts on this next week, but this seems to me like a sort of something that's it's kind of a blatant Spike TV thing to try and get some ratings. Uh, open fight night, I guess it's next week, the Gut Wrench Challenge or whatever the bloody hell it's called. What I'm going to say from this quickly is that it's something interesting. It's going to make numerous matches mm. for numerous wrestlers, so it's something interesting, but as the weeks go on, we'll give our opinion yeah. about it and, you know. Uh, so this is something, I guess, interesting, something different. We haven't really seen this before, I guess, and uh, we also get the announcement that Devon is the TV champion because he wants to... Fight as a, he wants to be a fighting champion. Testify! And he has to defend his title every week. So there we go. Um, more thoughts on this whole on this whole segment as it, as it happens next week. So there we go. Um, so, yeah, I guess we'll move on from that, I imagine. Um, because we had knockouts, actually. Next, Gail Kim was in the ring, so they thought to themselves, why? Why not give her seven other knockouts and make a, an eight knockout tag match? We had Gail Kim, Madison Ring, Rosita and Sarita versus Velvet, Mickey James, Tara and Teshmaka. And my God, wasn't it good to see Tara and Teshmaka back as a tag team. Well, it's what we've seen the past few weeks, maybe month. We've seen the same knockout appearing mm. and dropping the odd one in now yes. and again. But now they're actually trying to maybe bring in, especially with this thing that's going to be next week, bring in a chance to Gail Kim to go online against numerous knockouts. We may get to see some old ones back, maybe some new ones. Who knows what's going to happen? I really like this idea of how they're going to be progressing with this. Yeah, and uh, the knockouts match, it was it was okay. It went about five minutes. You get Velvet distracting Gail Kim to allow Teshmaka to get the pin. Nice for, uh, nice to, because she's just returned to Impact Wrestling, so it's nice for her to get the pin. Um, I guess the feud between Velvet and Gail Kim is going to continue. Maybe with a bit of Brooke Teshmaka in there. I imagine now they're giving her the win here. It would be interesting to see that. I know they're a tag team. You know I don't really agree with knockout tag teams, but this would be a good direction for her to give her a new yep. opponent and just something, maybe a bit of a push or a bit of a match against Gale. Yeah, and before we move on to the next segment, I just want to give a quick thought I've just had on this whole open fight night thing. I think something that TNA is lacking at the moment is they're lacking some new tag teams. I think that's one thing they need. They need some new guys in the X division. And I think that could maybe influx some talent into those divisions, maybe. I think they need more, a bit more, to beef those divisions up. And the women's a little bit. And maybe the women's tag. Well, with this... Why? 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 They bring in the Blossoms. They're awesome. They're British. They're a great tag team. Knockout tag Go on, okay. you just say... Just imagine I didn't say ta knockout tag teams and just continue from there. Well, I'm saying... With this having once a month, it's going to be giving TNA something different to build on a have to have each month. New feuds, new matches, new challenges. Mm -hmm. So I'm really thinking that with all those titles like Dan's name, it's going to give TNA a chance to give new talent a push or a mm -hmm. direction. So I'm looking forward to it. It'll be good to see some talent we haven't seen on TV on TV just to see what they can offer us. Um, maybe some OVW talent will get on there. Who really knows? Um, after Next, after that segment, we've got our weekly TV title segment. Gunner versus Devon, and the thing that stood out to me here is the crowd. Let's go, Devon! <laughs> Let's go, head cheese! Uh, sorry, Devon! Sorry. Uh, it, was a, it was a four minute match. Devon wins with the Spine Buster. Um, average match, really, wasn't it? Well, one thing that you pointed out that I agree on Gunner, obviously, we've seen dominate, take yes. people out, build a big name for himself. Rob Van Dam. Yeah, build a name for him. Got to where we thought it was maybe a big push for him. Now he goes against Devon. Sorry, no. he's not really a step up, not a step down, and he doesn't. He loses to him. And, <laughs> I don't know. It's poor for Gunner, but again, it's all about giving Devon wins as the TV champ and a push towards whoever he's going to lose it to eventually. Hopefully, this will be the first step in them trying to try to legitimise the TV title a little bit. This is kind of like the, to me, the first step in the TV title maybe getting a little bit better. I mean, I wonder who he's going to face next week. Um, I just hope to God that TNA take this opportunity to make the TV title mean a little bit more having it de being defended every week, rather than just being defended on pay-per-views like it was before. It's called the TV title, for God's sake. So we'll see where this goes, see who he faces. Uh, you never know. Um, after this, we got what I thought was a very good promo segment from James the Cowboy Storm, um, basically saying that he's sorry, feels like he's let everyone down, Rude didn't beat Storm, I beat myself. And uh, I thought this was a pretty, pretty good promo, pretty seemed pretty genuine. I could actually believe in what he was saying. I thought this was a really good promo. Well, I believe in one thing, 
Storm, you did let us down, mate. You did. <laughs> no. No. Um, he talks about his dad in heaven being proud, not being able to tell his daughter that he lost, and uh, maybe his luck has run out. And to be honest with you, MJ, I I hope to God after what they did at lockdown, they give him the belt a slam anniversary because this that was this was a really good pro. I really enjoyed this pro. It was really genuine from James Storm. Well, this did follow from the pay per view. They give that good thing. He did mention about. Try and still be in the top pitch, and so I do look forward to seeing how they because obviously they have another thing going rude in these challenges from this thing they have in the main event, yeah. but maybe they'll still build their way back to Storm afterwards. So I look forward to that. The thing about this is that they're going a bit down the sympathy route at the end. After Storm's great promo, I give him full credit that I liked it at the end. He did get a bit like I can't say anymore, mic down out. So they're going a bit down the sympathy route after a strong promo. They go to that, and I just thought a bit. Oh, so we're doing so well. I guess they're trying to show genuine emotion by doing that. I don't really know, but I, I did think this promo was very well done, and I do hope to God they build him up to winning the belt at TNA's 10-year anniversary show, uh, Slammiversary. I hope that does happen, because I think that's that's exactly how it should happen, in my opinion. Um, After that segment, we've got our number one contenders match. Mr. Anderson versus Jeff Hardy versus the uh, lately inducted Rob Van Dam, Hogan's best mate. Um, This main event... Seemed a little rushed. It only went about five minutes compared to our usual main event lengths of you know ten plus minutes. Um, RVD wins. I mean the match. The match was pretty good. It was rushed, but RVD wins with a backslide. And um, you know we can talk all we want about the match, but the main thing is Rob Van Dam is the number one contender. We got our main event of sacrifice sorted already. Now, what are your thoughts on Rob Van Dam being the number one contender? I know the people out there are going to want to hear that because I look at Rob Van Dam. I think this is TNA's way of saying thank you for coming back. Thank you for being a part of that big mm. match and here's our payoff to you we're going to give you a match against Rude there you go but I look at Rude, uh, RBD and see him as a guy who could be putting X Division or something like that over so by him coming back going straight to the main event straight to the yeah. target it was a bit like whoa 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 it was and I just thought but overall it's still going to give Rude a challenge or someone that is all big in WWE slash TNA. Which is what I was going to say next. I'm not a big fan of RVD being in the main event scene. I think a guy like RVD should be putting over talents. Um, one of those guys should be Rude, though. I mean, you've got, like you said, it's going to be like another big name for Rude to beat um, on his way to probably James Storm beating him down the line for the title. Um, so I don't really... I'm not a big fan of RVD being in the main event, but if they're going to do it in the sense that they're going to give Rude another victory against a guy like RVD, who is still a big star. We saw how, well, big star, but you saw how he, over he was with the Impact Wrestling crowd. And generally, if you're over with those guys, you're generally fucking pretty over. That's very true. I do, it was kind of not predictable, but the way it was going from the pay per view's return, mm -hmm. he was a likely candidate to win. But you look at the others, Hardy, he's had a great match against Angle, and that could have literally put yeah. back into the title picture and Anderson he keeps flowing about so I didn't really believe him when even no. though I would like a bank of title mm -hmm. picture it would have been a bit of a world for him so well but damn Jeff Hardy could have been possibilities but three faces yeah but we got the winner we got the pay the pay for mm -hmm. event. I just wonder what they're going to do with Jeff Hardy now that he's had that big blow off of angle who are they going to make him feud with I guess on his road to redemption who really knows um I guess we'll find out on the way to uh, on the way to sacrifice. But we've got the main event of sacrifice announced here. Um, in that sense, it was a pretty good main event segment. We followed on from lockdown pretty well. I think the only thing that really didn't get showcased was Motor City Machine Guns, which you thought they they probably would do after they'd just been returned. Uh, again, yes, they had the different idea for Samoa Joe's we saw early in the night. But if they, yeah, if they if he came in and they had their backstage segment saying we, we almost beat you, we can beat you, we still want to talk. Or backstage segment instead of the stupid Eric Young thing they had, oh, gosh, <gasps> yeah. they could have that. It would have been better. And the other person that was missing, which is not really needed, but someone who's still around, is Sting. The fans want to see him. Why not have him appear somewhere to add that? To TNA surely. Even though I don't really want to see him in a wrestling capacity, but there we go. Um, so yeah, I mean, I do think they'll probably give Motor City Machine Guns the belts at Slammiversary. That's probably where they, that's probably what they're going to do. They're going to build that feud to be blown off at Slammiversary, I feel. Um, so this show overall, it followed on from lockdown pretty well, other than some minor things like we pointed out there. You set up the main event at Sacrifice. You've got some good direction going into Sacrifice. Most of the feuds was showed on this show. You had that whole announcement of Hogan next week, you know, that whole open fight night thing, which could be interesting. We'll reserve our judgment on that next uh, next week, of course. Um, but I generally, I, I thought this was another good TNA show, personally. Pretty good show. It followed on. We had things that, as I said throughout the show, there's things that kind of 
jumped a little bit and just felt a bit rushed or a bit not really following on for the pay-per-view. But it did give us segments and did build us to, to the next pay-per-view. Yeah, and I think TNA, in, after a disappointing lockdown, in my opinion, did need to deliver at least a semi-good TV show. And they've given us something to look forward to next week, um, something interesting, some direction to the pay-per-view and some follow-up from lockdown. So they've got all the basics right there, which is generally what I look for in a, in a wrestling show. So I, I give this like a B-. minus. It was a good, in my opinion, a good, a decent to good show. I'll put it that way. I'll give it a, a B minus towards a C plus. Yep, fair enough, really. Um, guys, give us your grades or give us your thoughts on this TNA Impact Wrestling show down in that comment section uh, below, of course. And uh, make sure you check out tomorrow where we will be re reviewing WWE SmackDown as we do on our regular Friday nights. So, NJ, do you wanna do you wanna take this home for us? Well, thank you very much, people, for tuning to another video from the British Bears, from Mr. Parkin and me, MJ. Here's our club card. If you notice where we, if you see us about again, contact us, please. Until next time, people, goodbye.